welcome to the Eating Disorder Therapist podcast. This is a podcast to help you find peace with food and overcome disordered eating. And I'm Harriet Frew, aka the Eating Disorder Therapist. And I'm so excited to share with you all kinds of stories, tips, information and guest interviews to help you on your journey in finding peace with food. So thank you so much for listening today. Now today I'm going to be talking all about being highly sensitive and how this can be one of your superpowers. But firstly, I just want to let you know that I now have a patron attached to my podcast and this means that you can have a bit more connection with me. Um, And you can do this by um, paying a small amount, by paying £1.50 a month. You can get um, sent a personalised postcard from me on a monthly basis with an inspiring recovery message. Or if you would like access to additional podcast content where you can submit questions and feel that you get that slightly more personalised approach, um, you can um, join the patron for £5 a month. Um, And you can try it and subscribe. And if you decide it's not for you, you can unsubscribe any time. You're not kind of um, tied into it. But hopefully it's a way that I can connect with you all more as my followers. And it also just gives a little bit of um, a financial contribution towards the podcast. So if you're interested in that, do check out the details in the show notes. Okay, so let's talk about being highly sensitive. So people with eating disorders often have the trait of being highly sensitive. And what this means is that you feel things deeply. It's like having a thin skin to the world and at times this can feel quite overwhelming. Now growing up, it may have left you feeling a bit different from others or as though you didn't fit in. And you may also have felt at times that other people just don't get you you might have been told maybe that you're too much, that you're overly emotional or that you're too sensitive. And because of this as well, you may have then compared yourself to others growing up, thinking that you should somehow be different, that you should somehow be more extrovert, more thick skinned and less caring. And I know myself, I'm quite a sensitive person. And as a child, I would often worry about other people's feelings. As I was a real empath and would take on everyone else's feelings on board because I felt them so deeply. I also found noisy environments quite overstimulating. And being around people too much was just um, really draining for me because I do love socialising and I have some really close friends, but I definitely need time away to restore my energy and I am more of an introvert. As well, I feel my feelings deeply. So this can be wonderful when you're experiencing kind of the highs and the joy and the excitement and the anticipation and great things in life. But also it means that you feel probably the grief and the anxiety and the sadness and the anger and other feelings more deeply too. So it's a mixed bag. But if you're listening to this and you relate, you may view being highly sensitive as a kind of disadvantageous and cumbersome thing that you have to bear, something that makes life excruciatingly intense. However, Anton St. Martin says, and I hope I've said Anton's name right, highly sensitive people are too often perceived as weaklings or damaged goods. But to feel intensely is not a symptom of weakness. It is the trademark of the truly alive and compassionate. And that is absolutely where I'm coming from with this. And absolutely, I support Anton's perspective. So I'm going to talk more now about some of the advantages of being highly sensitive so that you can begin to embrace this part of yourself and see it as a superpower. And what I'm going to talk about is taken from Dr. Elaine Aron's work, and she's the author of the wonderful book, The Highly Sensitive Person. And also, um, when I'm listing some of the points, that's going to be referring to Jen Graneman's work. Hopefully I've said Jen's name right. And she has a website called introvertdeer.com. So I will put all those links in the show notes if you want to find out more about being highly sensitive. So we're going to look at 14 advantages of being highly sensitive. So number one, 
were able to concentrate deeply. Now, this is especially true when there aren't many distractions. Now, I know for me, when I've worked in an open plan office, I find that very distracting because I hear all the noise, I listen to other people's conversations, I get really kind of drawn into everything that's going on around me. However, when I'm working on my own, in my own space and have peace and quiet, definitely I'm able to concentrate deeply and feel I can get really absorbed in my work in a really productive way and get a lot of satisfaction from it. So that's a real advantage of being highly sensitive, you're able to kind of do that deep dive in. Number two, we notice the subtleties that others may miss. Now this trait is something that might be most noticeable to you personally. So it's that we process sensory information more carefully because we use areas of our brain that are associated with more complex processing. So our awareness of the subtleties is useful in an infinite number of ways, from the simple pleasure in life to strategizing our response based on our awareness of others' nonverbal cues. And they may not have any idea that they're giving these off. And it could be about their mood or their trustworthiness. So definitely as well, this is something that I would often draw on this in the therapy room because I guess sometimes it's really hard for people to um, be able to say what they really mean um, and sometimes they might have a real conflict about that and they may be feeling that they should be feeling a certain way or they you know, may be kind of just not very self-aware yet or in touch with their deepest feelings. So it can be very, very helpful sometimes as well if you're quite a highly sensitive person, you can pick up really clearly on those nonverbal cues and have a good sense about what someone's feeling even if they're not really sure of it themselves. Um, so just reflect on that. Is that something that's true for you? Are you quite good at picking up on the subtleties of people's body language? And those, those little cues often go unnoticed by other people. Number three, we're good at tasks requiring vigilance, accuracy, speed, and the detection of minor differences. Likewise, we're better, as, better at noticing errors and avoiding mistakes. And this is due to our ability to notice the subtleties. Now, I think as well, often people with eating disorders are really, really good at kind of, um, you know, looking for the detail, um, being very, very thorough, noticing those little imperfections and I guess being a bit of a perfectionist sometimes that cannot be too helpful maybe if it's directed towards your body or something else but actually for some areas of life it could be quite helpful. Um, this is something I don't relate to so much. I have to say I am definitely in the good enough place. I am not really a perfectionist and you can probably even tell from this podcast that i um, I don't go for perfection. I tend to kind of roll with whatever comes. <laughs> okay, number four, we're able to process material to deeper levels. So we relate and compare what we notice to our past experience with other similar things. So we process information in what psychologists call semantic memory, which is a type of long-term memory that deals with meanings, understandings, and other concept-based knowledge. So this means as well, if something happens to you in the present, you'll probably be filtering it through past experiences, relating it to past self-awareness, relating it to past situations. And it allows you to kind of have that kind of deeper, more reflective understanding of things, which increases your kind of self-knowledge. Um, so that I think, again, is a really brilliant skill to have. And just reflecting, do you relate to that? Do you notice that you're able to really kind of do that deep dive and be self-aware and think about things on a deeper level? Number five, we're able to learn something new without being aware that we've even learned it. And this means we're intuitive, which means we can pick up and work through information in a semi-conscious or unconscious way. And we may suddenly just know the answer to a problem without knowing how we know. Our intuition may seem like a sixth sense. Now, this is something I definitely relate to today. I think when I was a bit younger, I was more anxious. I was more I'm concerned with what other people thought I should do. So my ex the external validation sometimes would get in the way of my intuition. Whereas I think today I've got much better at being able to kind of tune in and think about, you know, what is my inner voice saying to me? What is the kind of deep knowing about a situation? So again, reflect for yourself. 
is that something that you can um, you know, relate to? Can you feel sometimes that you have a bit of a sixth sense in situations? Number six, we're highly conscientious. So we're more likely to be considerate and show good manners. And we're more likely to notice when someone else isn't being conscientious. So in a crowded public space, we might be more aware of when we're stand, where we're standing or where we're placing our belongings to make sure we're not getting in someone else's way. So I think as well, sometimes this highly conscientiousness can go a bit too far in the kind of people pleasing direction and then that's not so helpful. But in lots of ways as well, I think it just means as well, when you're highly sensitive, you are very attuned to your environment. So you're not wanting to kind of um, impact negatively on other people around you. You can be quite kind of considerate and thoughtful of, you know, someone next to you who might be struggling or kind of looking out for people. Number seven, we have high levels of empathy and we're deeply moved by other people's emotions. So we're aware of other people's moods and intentions and we may actually feel another person's emotions ourselves to some extent. In a study by Bianca Acovido, sensitive and non-sensitive people looked at photographs of both strangers and loved ones showing happiness, sadness or a neutral feeling. In all situations in which emotion was shown, but especially when looking at the happy faces of loved ones, sensitive people showed increased activation in the areas of the brain associated with empathy. When looking at photographs of their loved ones being unhappy, sensitive people showed more activation in areas suggesting they wanted to do something to act even more than in areas associated with empathy. So again, this is something I definitely relate to. Again, it's really, really helpful kind of in a counselling situation to be able to empathise with other people. But again, relate to this yourself. Do you feel as well that you have the ability to sort of really stand in someone else's shoes and to have empathy and to sort of feel the emotions they're feeling? Um, and do you feel that kind of um, intense joy or happiness perhaps when you're thinking about people that you really love or noticing photographs of people that you care about? Number eight, we relish a good outcome and figure out more than others do how to make it happen. So highly sensitive people react more to emotions because we process events and information deeply. We especially react to positive emotions like curiosity, anticipation of success, a pleasant desire for something, satisfaction, joy and contentedness. And we figure out more than non-highly sensitive people do how to make good things happen so we can enjoy those positive emotions. For example, we might plan a really good birthday party. Now, I think for me, with a really good birthday party, sometimes I would just shy away from that because of all the noise and stimulation and everything else. But I do enjoy making other people happy and putting care and attention into things, particularly when it's going to be a really exciting and positive outcome. So see if that's something you relate to or not. Number nine, we're specialists at fine motor movements. This means that we excel at things like sewing, sculpting, drawing, or playing a musical instrument. Anything that requires movements produced by the body's small muscle groups. We're also better at holding still. Now, this one I don't really relate to. Um, however, I know that many of my clients that I've worked with who are highly sensitive do show so much flair and talent in these areas. Number 10, we learn languages better. Because we process information deeply over time, we understand and remember more. Now for me, I did get an A in my GCSE French many, 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 many years ago, but I haven't really used it since. So I think I'm sitting on the fence a bit with that one. <laughs> Number 11, we consider the past and the future more. So when making a decision, we think about related events that have happened in the past and we think about all the possible ways our decision might affect the future. So again, we've got that real awareness and kind of ability to reflect. And sometimes that can result in a bit of overthinking maybe and getting analysis paralysis. But in other ways, it really just helps us have that kind of um, deeper insight into ourselves so we might be able to make a wiser decision. Number 12, we think about our own thinking more. And this isn't self-centered because most highly sensitive people really often do think about other people a lot and are very kind and considerate. But what it means is that we're more aware of and better able to talk about our own inner re reflections and musings. So we may reflect on how something went wrong to help us avoid a similar mistake in the future. 
And I know for me, I do love more than anything in the world talking to my closest friends and sharing my thoughts and feelings and for that to be a reciprocal thing and hearing about their thoughts and feelings and being able to kind of share all that awareness and insight on a deeper level. And it's one of my favorite things in the world. And I think if you're a highly sensitive person, you probably really relate to that. And if you're not, um, you probably may not enjoy all of that quite so much. So think, does that relate to you? Number 13, we're more right-brained. We're less linear and more creative in a synthesizing way. Definitely true for me, actually. I am really not a very kind of logical, pragmatic, process-based person. I much more prefer being a bit off-piste, a bit creative, going with the spontaneity of things. Um, So that's one I definitely relate to. But what about you? And number 14, we may be more soulful and spiritual. This doesn't necessarily mean we're committed to an organized religion, although many highly sensitive people do, um, you know, do align themselves with a certain religion, but it means we're concerned with the fate of humanity, the future and big complex ideas that are not black and white. And we might frequently ponder, what is the meaning of life and why am I here? And again, that is one that's definitely true for me, having some sort of spiritual life, feeling there is um, sort of more to life than our physical body, feeling that kind of deeper awareness and connection, that peacefulness and contentment of feeling kind of aligned with something bigger in the universe is definitely something that helps me and brings me a lot of peace and contentment and also brings a lot of meaning to life and sort of, you know, motivation to stay on a certain path and live in aligned with values so have a think which ones do you relate to which ones do you not relate to hopefully this podcast has helped give you some insight into how being highly sensitive can actually be a wonderful thing and it can almost increase the joy and um, your ability to experience the multicolored kind of range of different emotions and feelings and perceptions of life. So um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for listening. If you're not following me already, do seek me out on Instagram at the Eating Disorder Therapist. And for further um, support in your relationship with food, do go to the Eating Disorder therapist.co.uk that's my website which has got more result, more info even on my online courses and if you're interested in the patron do um look at the show notes below and um yeah it would be great if lots of you sign up and um, thanks for listening again and i look forward to sharing another podcast episode with you very soon mm-hmm.